Hey y'all, my name's Gray Madden from Self Reliance Publishing, and today we're going to continue our series on how to raise worms. This video is going to be about the pH, moisture content, and temperature of your worm's bedding. If you can control those three things, you're going to be well on your way to having healthy, happy worms. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so it's really important that you maintain a neutral pH in your worm's bedding. The primary culprit here is for the bedding to become too acidic. And you'll notice this is a problem if your worms are balling up in the corner, trying to crawl out of the bin, not eating well, not growing. Uh, these are all indications that your worms bedding are too acidic, is too acidic. And the primary reason the bedding becomes too acidic is either overfeeding the wrong things or just generally overfeeding, especially with grains. Uh, if you're going to be feeding your worms grains, you want to keep the feed that you give them to down to what they're able to eat in a day or two days max. If you feed too much and you provide too much of that and it gets mixed in with the bedding, the bedding will become acidic and make your worm sick. Also, if you overfeed things like coffee grounds, uh, orange peels, stuff of that nature, food that's naturally acidic, you can increase the acidity of the of the bedding and you don't want that. So keep that kind of stuff to a minimum. So if you realize you have a problem with too much acidity in your worm's bedding, there's a couple courses of action that you can take. Uh, if it's not too bad, you might be able to bring the pH up to a neutral level with some crushed eggshells or cr crushed oyster shells, something in that nature. Uh, if you've got a bit bad problem on your hands, you might have to harvest your worm bin, which we're going to do a video on how to do that. Uh, harvest your worm bin and take your worms, cocoons, and place them in another bin with fresh bedding. If you've got a severe problem on your hands, that might be your best course of action. Alright, so another thing that we're going to have to control is the moisture content of the bedding. We are, this is important because if the moisture content is too low, they're not going to be able to breathe and if the moisture content's too high the worms aren't going to be able to breathe so obviously it's really important that we keep this correct now a good moisture content to shoot for is somewhere between about 50 and 80 percent and that's easy to test if you have a moisture meter if you don't have a moisture meter a good test for that is to grab a handful of bedding and to squeeze it if you're able to get a drop or two out of your bedding, then you're in good shape. If you're not able to get any water out, then you're too dry. And if you get a whole stream, then you're too wet. So as you see here, I'm squeezing this bedding and I didn't get anything out. So we're a little bit too dry. We're not, we're not far from where we need to be, but we're a little bit too dry. So the fix for that is to take a squirt bottle and just simply squirt it down a few times. And I'm also gonna hit the newspaper on top a little bit. You don't wanna give, you don't wanna squirt too much or you're just gonna be creating another problem for yourself. So, Use a spray bottle with moderation. If you're too wet, then the fix is to take some fresh dry bedding and mix it in there with your existing bedding. And that dry bedding will absorb some of the material and even you out to where you need to be. Now, the moisture content depends on a lot of factors, the humidity and but the biggest factor is going to be what you feed your worms. So if you're feeding your worms food scraps and you feed them watermelon, pumpkins, and other foods that have high moisture content, then you might find that your bedding tends to be a little bit soggy from time to time because uh, that moisture from the food that you feed them is going to be transferred to the worms bedding. If you feed them grains, or other food that tends to be dry and not have a high moisture content, then you're gonna find that you're gonna be dry a lot and you're gonna have to 
raise the moisture content by squirting it down with some water. So the third factor that we're gonna try and control is the temperature of the worm's bedding. Worms prefer to be between 60 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's where you're gonna see your maximum reproduction and your maximum growth. The outer tolerances that they're able to withstand depends on the species of worms, but it's probably gonna be somewhere between 30 degrees Fahrenheit or freezing for a low, and about 100 degrees Fahrenheit for a high. Again, uh, the actual range depends on the species of the worms. So obviously the ambient temperature is going to come into play for the temperature of the worms bedding. And if you can keep them inside of a controlled environment like your home, uh, that would be best. But if you don't have that luxury, that's okay. Most areas you can keep your worms outside year round and they'll be able to withstand it. You're gonna see loss of production during the summer heat and during the winter cold, uh, but that's just, gonna, that's just something that you're going to have to accept. Uh, something else to watch out for and keep in mind when it comes to the temperature of your worm's bedding is what you're actually using for bedding. If you use compost, uh, that's perfectly fine, but you're gonna wanna make sure that it's aged compost and that it's already gone through the heat period. If you use fresh compost that hasn't gone through the heat cycle and heated up, there's the potential that that could occur inside your worm bin. And if that happens, it's gonna heat up well above the 100 degrees necessary to kill your worms. So you wanna watch out for that. And the same is true if you use uh, manure for bedding, you're gonna to wanna to use aged manure for the same exact reason. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my others about how to raise worms as well as other topics dealing with self-reliance. As always, I appreciate every like, every comment, and every subscribe. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.